Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. I will be solving math problems for GMAT out of this book here, GMAT Review, the 12th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it in order to follow my work. You have to have the book in front of you so that you can read the problem on your own and follow the work. Uh, I will be solving data sufficiency problems. Data sufficiency problems are a strange creature. These are not sort of pro these are not the sort of problems that you have dealt with probably in your school years. Uh, very strange. So let me take a few minutes uh, to actually go over what they actually entail. And the most important part of uh, what data sufficiency problems are about is knowing what the answer choices mean. There are five answer choices that they give you, obviously. A, B, C, D, E. I shouldn't have said, I shouldn't have said obviously, because obviously it doesn't have to be five, but they, they, they give you five answer choices. And you have to understand what these answer choices mean in the exam. Because if you waste your time and if you're confused, and if each time you have to stop and think about it, that's no good. So while you're preparing for the GMAT, the meaning of these five answer choices should become your second nature. A uh, week after, if you forget all about it, it doesn't matter. But while you're preparing for the GMAT, you have to know what they mean. So let me quickly go over them. You are to pick answer choice A in the data sufficiency questions. You are, you are to pick answer choice A if the first statement by itself is sufficient. One by itself is sufficient. So let me give you an example of what I mean by first, first statement by itself because I haven't even shown you. Let's, let me give you a simple example. So simple in fact that it will not appear in the exam. It's way too simple just to make you understand the meaning of the answer choices. So say for example, I ask you how much is how much is or what is how much is A plus B? That's the question. How much is A plus B? In the first statement, I tell you that A equals 5. Is the first statement by itself enough to answer this question, how much is A plus B? Obviously not, because we do not know what B is. So in this case, we know that the answer choice is not E. You are to pick answer choice B if you think if you feel the second statement by itself is sufficient to answer the question. And when, you, when you're looking at second statement by itself, you are to do exactly what he says by itself. In other words, while you're looking at second statement, you are to forget in your mind. You have to erase your memory as if you never saw whatever it is that you saw in the first statement. In the first statement, it, it they tell me A equals 5. I have to forget that and only look at what is given in the second statement. In the second statement, I'm told that B equals 3. Just by looking at second statement by itself, can I answer this question? How much is A plus B? Obviously not because I don't know what how much is A is. So the answer here cannot be B. What does C mean? C stands for both. Let's look, let's put the two statements together and see if we can figure out the answer to the problem here. If we look at both of them together, A and B, uh, first statement and second statement, A is 5, B is 3, can I answer the question now? Obviously. So in this case, the answer would be C. Because both of the, the statements together do answer the question that is being posed. One statement by itself cannot answer the question, second statement by itself cannot answer the question. Let's move on to D. What does D mean? D stands for either. Either. Let me give you an example of an either. Now, either example would be something like this. Say for example I ask you how much is, let's, let's make up something here, how much is A to the fourth? How much is A to the fourth? And in the first statement, I tell you that A equals 2. Well, if A equals 2, you can very easily figure out what A to the 4th is. So what do you do? One first statement by itself is sufficient. So here's, what, here's the habit that I, that I, that I tell my clients when I'm, when I'm tutoring them, when I'm preparing them for the GMAT. As soon as, you see the data, as soon as you see the data sufficiency problem on the screen, as soon as you see it, get in the habit of writing this. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Just memorize it. A, D, B, C, E. Okay? And, of course, 
oh, I haven't actually finished talking about this thing. Oh, we're talking about either part here. Okay, I'll come to that in a second. A, D, B, C, E. And I have a mnemonic for that here. For those of you who do not know what mnemonic means, look it up and learn it. M is silent. Mnemonic is just a memory device that you may, uh, mem mem mnemonic is just a trick that you make up to help you remember something. Just think of the year AD and BC. The years come in, you know, AD and BC. So AD, BC, E. What, is it, what it means is that, what it means is that, if you found out that the first statement by itself is sufficient, you can immediately rule out BC and E. Why can I rule out B, C, and E? Because B means second statement by itself is sufficient. Well, second statement by itself, that answer is not true here because we just found out that A is also sufficient by itself. So, if, if second statement by itself does turn out to be sufficient by itself, the answer would be either. Answer also cannot be C because if the first statement by itself works, which it does here, if the first statement by itself works, C means that you need both statements, but you just told me that the first statement by itself is enough to answer the question. You, you do not need both, so it rules out C. And E stands for neither. Well, E is ruled out because you just told me that the first statement by itself is sufficient. So as soon as I find that the first statement works, I can rule out B, C, and E. As soon as I find the first statement works, I raise my odds to 50-50. All right, let's carry on then. So the answer has to be either A or a D. Here's the second statement. Second statement, I'm, I'm going to tell you that A, equal, A squared equals 4. If A, squ A squared by equals 4, can you answer me how much is A to the 4th? Obviously you can. A squared equals 4, A to the 4th can easily be figured out, which means that either of these statements, you see there are check marks on both of them, that tells me that either of that statement, either of these statements by itself is enough to answer the questions. That's your answer here, D. D stands for either. This is a system that I that I have uh, used, that I made up, and it, it works for me because uh, it's a nice, it gives you a nice mnemonic device. Here's another word. Uh, that, here's that word again, mnemonic. And the mnemonic that I that we come up with is this. One two bend. One two bend. Remember, one two bend. If statement one by itself is enough, the answer is A. If statement two by itself is enough, the answer is B. If you need both, if you need both, the answer is C, B for both. If you find out that one by itself is enough and the second one by itself is enough, if, both, if either of them are enough by itself, then the, the answer is either, which is D. And then if neither of them is enough, in this case, well, let's talk about an example of a neither. Let's pick up an example where the answer turns out to be E. So here's the question, how much is how much is A plus B plus C? And I'm telling you that A equals 2 and B equals 3. So, can you answer the question? So, immediately write down A, D, B, C, E. That's the first thing you do. Is the, second, is the first statement by itself enough to answer the question how much is A plus B plus C? Obviously not. It does not work. Which means A does not work. You can rule out A and D. The answer has to be either B, C or E. Is the second statement by itself enough? The answer is no. Second statement by itself is not enough to answer this question. Cross out, B is gone. Answer has to be either C or E. Either both or neither. Let's put them together. If A equals 2 and B equals 3, can you tell me how much is A plus B plus C? The answer is no. I need to know what C is in order, in order to figure out that quantity. Answer in this case is neither. That's it. The answer is D. Answer is E here. So answer choice E stands for neither. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, enough of the talk. I just wanted to give you some introductions before I get uh, before I got going. So let me start it. Now. I do not even know. I do not even know how much time I have taken up. So give me a second. I'll, I'll look up in the back to figure out what time or how much time I have taken in these questions because I forgot to look at the clock as to when I started. Just give me a second. Oh boy. Listen, we are 10 minutes into this thing. I'm not going to start a problem right now because I don't want to rush through it. I'm going to stop right now. This, this will be the introduction to the data sufficiency questions. Uh, and then I will start solving the problem. Uh,
right after in, in a second and in, in, in the next recording okay listen I hope you found this information helpful uh, look out for the for the uh, videos that I'm going to put for the data sufficiency questions the tag that I'm going to use is this one here GMAT dash 12e because this is the 12th edition then the page number page 273 is where I am if you talk to page 273 you're going to find the data sufficiency questions that's, that's where they begin DS stands for data sufficiency number one okay and there are altogether 174 of them total 174 of them I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I what I think of uh, what I think of what my opinion is and it is just an opinion so, uh, some people might disagree with me but in my opinion through my uh, experience that I have and I've been at it for 20 some years now I, I started this thing I started teaching the prep courses in 1989 so it's been a little over 20 years uh, I think the first 50 are quite easy 1 through 50 are quite easy out of the 174 51 through 100 are what I would call medium and 101 through 174 again it depends on your background I'm talking about a person of an average background here I'm not talking about a person who is who is very good in math who is very good in algebra and so on and so forth I'm talking about a person of an average background these are hard questions so I'm going, to rec I'm going to try to record all of them. Well, I'm not going to try to record all of them. I will record all of them uh, gradually, but surely. Uh, look out for the next video. So once I start recording them, once I start uh, uh, uploading them on the YouTube, if, you, if you're looking for a specific problem, this is what I'm getting at. If you're looking for a specific data sufficiency problem from the 12th edition book, this is all you have to do. Put down GMAT-12E for 12th edition, dash, and then the page number where the problem is located and then dash data sufficiency and then the question number if it's a two digit uh, if it's a two digit problem if it's a problem number 13 put down 13 obviously if it's problem number 131 put down 131 you get the idea I'm, I'm, I'm explaining too much in other words what I'm trying to tell you is that if you're looking for problem number one don't type in 001 that's not what I'm going to use even though they end in three digits so it's not like that it's too annoying we, 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 we don't we, we don't want to be so pedantic look it up and learn it it doesn't hurt uh, pedantic means to, to be excessively show off in one's learning and knowledge and so forth to be ex uh, to be to be overly scholar scholarly anyway look it up as I said and learn it when I brush off a word it doesn't mean that it's not important uh, it means exactly what I said pick up hey, you must have a good dictionary pick up a dictionary and learn it get in the habit of doing it it doesn't hurt to expand one's vocabulary at the same time when one is doing a math problem it does not it does no harm anyway I hope you found this helpful as I said I'm going to be putting the video soon if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring I do personal face-to-face -face personal private tutoring I do tutoring over the telephone it does work I was surprised myself but it does work and I also tutor over the internet through Skype and so forth so if you if you need any help at all in your preparation for GMAT any help at whatsoever in any aspect of the GMAT, I do the entire exam. Uh, get hold of me, send me an email, go to my website at www.prep, P R E P prep, F O R 4, gmat.com, and send me an email. Or you can go to www.keshwaniprep.com and send me an email. Alright? Thank you very much.